folks, and welcome back to Gatekeeper Media as we continue to bring you coverage of the 2022 Portland Open. We're on our final round, and we're on the back nine here out at Glendivere as our players make one final push up the leaderboard to wrap things up on our West Coast swing on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. Thank you all for tuning in, and again, a special shout out to our Patreon supporters. Once again, I'm Dustin Murray, bringing you the commentary here as we again put the finishing touches on this one. It's been a great tournament. So you can see Joel Freeman playing very well on the front nine, as was Gannon Burr. Both of them in the top five. Adam Hammes and Cole Riddallen, of course, not too far out of the picture in their own right. As we take a look at the leaderboard, you can see Garrett Gerthy and Simon Lazat are leading the charge with Isaac Robinson and Joel Freeman tied for the podium. A couple of ties across the board as well in the top ten. So we now get to hole number 10, a 710 foot par four. The Mando forces you to go through one of two gaps off the front of the tee. There is some OB deep of the green that comes in pretty close and it's, as you can see, kind of perched up here right on top of a hill. So definitely the risk of rollaways is gonna come into play. There's also an OB green and a couple of hazards short of the pin that you have to kind of deal with. And you can see there's two big gaps. You wanna go left or right? Gannon decides to go turnover through the left gap. Yeah, and that will do just fine. As long as you can get through all those gaps, get out into the open, you're good to go. So we'll see which gap Hammes wants to choose. Usually the bigger hyzer shots go to the right gap. Looks like Hammes is trying to turn one through the left gap, and that'll do. Look maybe a bit earlier than he wanted, though. But there is really no OB left to worry about other than the sand traps and a golf green that's near the pin. Freeman going for that big turnover to the left as well. As again, compared to yesterday, the conditions are much drier than the rear star. Still some drizzles out there. A little bit windier, though. And we know Cole has big power here. It's that one way up there. Even trims a couple of limbs, but again, pushes plenty forward. Again, a very tricky green to approach with the OB right on the front side and the OB very close deep of the pin. As Joel will land right in the heart of the OB green. We'll have to take that one back and take the penalty. Playing the backhand hyzer. Looks to be on a pretty good line, but a little too high. Gets caught up short. Stays in bounds, but can't do much. And that is just a spectator rope, so Hamas is not OB. Tries to play the forehand up. Just a little right of where he wants to be, but stays in play, and that really is just the name of the game of this hole. Looking forehand there from Cole. Should put him right on the hill. And indeed, it will. That's a birdie putt right there out in front of him. Just kind of a jumper layup there from Joel to settle for bogey, limit the damage. Oh, and Hammes from Circle's Edge very nearly sinks it. Luckily, doesn't get the nasty roll all the way down. So he will be able to at least recover a par out of this. As Cole looks for more than that, though, beautifully played hole. We'll find his birdie. Kind of had a colder start in the front nine, to be honest, but still has plenty of time to make up some ground. Cannon continues to play well here. Seven under through ten with that par. So now Joel and Adam will look to clean things up here. That 
will do it. So we head over to hole 11, a nearly 1,200 foot par five with many gaps to choose from off the tee. So kind of a choose your own adventure as you head downhill and into this grove of trees that really make this green pretty well guarded. There are a couple of Mandos as well. The first one essentially right off the tee and the second one about 525 feet down the fairway that you need to stay left of. Just kind of keeps you away from this golf fairway on the far right. Oh, baby. Bye-bye. Yeah. Oh. yeah. That thing had some speed to it there from Cole. There is also a patch of OB kind of on the left-hand side of the fairway, but a pretty wide fairway nonetheless. It's really just about the approach to the pin and getting through one of these gaps. As Gannon takes a huge kick out left. I mean, yeah, I mean, there is some OB out there, but he did not find it. Good looking shot there from Hammes. We'll get him center cut out in the open. Getting this hole more of a marathon, not a sprint. Just hit your gap and get yourself in play. Though that is a little low from Joel. And yeah, this is just like off spectator pathways. So again, did not find any OB, nothing to worry about in that regard. That will very much put him back into play. That is a huge shot from Joel. Perfect angle on that thing. That thing is soaring down. Oh my goodness, he will be super happy with that. That's gonna make the approach at the pin for Birdie much easier. Speaking of putting a boom on one, look at this shot from Hammes. That thing is flying. Oh my goodness. As this is, I mean, the loosest sense an eagleable par five. Don't really see it too often, but it can be done. As Cole certainly. Pushes one way down there. As Drew Gibson actually did eagle the hole during round three with a 68 foot throw in. That being the only one though thus far. Eh, Upshot gets a little caught up there at the base of that tree, but still. Gets well on up there. Just kind of a jump putt approach here from Hammes. Right next to the koozie on those wood chips. Here's Cole with a very long bid for Eagle. Just a bit short. Oh, Gannon. Just not really getting what he wanted there. Gets caught up. <laughs> what? And I guess if you don't laugh, you'll cry. As that was certainly wide. But that'll get in there for par. And sticking the par as well there. I'm disappointing he couldn't really give it a true birdie bid. Meanwhile, Hammes and Cole, though, hammered away at this one. And it looks like they will be rewarded. As Hammes will indeed find birdie. Puts him the sixth under on the round and ties him up in fifth position with Joel Freeman and Gannon Burr. Cole also joining that tie for fifth now as we head to hole 12, a 370 foot par three. There is a Mando you need to stay left of about halfway up the fairway. Forces you to play more of the center shot. Again, do have to deal with a low ceiling. But yeah, just a dead straight shot with a low ceiling. 
slightly downhill. Not a bad shot there from Cole, but looks like it came up a bit short. Should we get to Hamas now? Try to flex a forehand down there, but oh, baby. oh, actually fights through all that and does get way on up there, right next to the pin. So very well played there from Hamas. Thought maybe it had gotten a little too high, but it's down there. That two is looking great. Just needs to lay on down and actually, you know what? That tree kick will work just fine as well. Gives him a good look at Birdie. Freeman trying to attack this similarly to Hamas. Let's see if that can fight through. He looks away. But not a terrible shot, just a little short. Maybe a pretty tricky putt. And not really giving that a chance, but obviously a difficult putt considering his tee shot. This Cole also has a lengthy one ahead of him. Now drift just a little too left. So par settled for for Freeman and Cole, but Hammes and Gannon right here for birdie. So Hammes will keep himself here. And that tie for fifth right with Gannon. Freeman will drop tied to seventh. Cole will also wind up being tied for seventh. As we want you to know, this coverage is brought to you by Fortnite. Fortnite's newest season starts this week, so follow the pinned comment below to check it out. get the whole 13 of 455 foot par three slightly uphill just pretty much a big distance shot no mandos or ob to worry about there are a few trees that guard the green but other than that pretty wide open don't have too much to concern yourself with and this is a great line to take up this right hand side some good fade usually you'll do it but oh man just got Hacked like he was trying to dunk it in the NBA. That might be too turned over. Oh, yeah. Going to be well right, but good distance. Just lengthy putt as he gets about pin high. Kind of the common error I feel that you see. If you are going to have one on this hole. Cole, though, needing that one to flip a little bit more. As that will carry to the left-hand side and might be obstructed by that big tree. Is Freeman looking to get back on track? Kind of cooled off a little bit here on this back nine. And that may, too, also be overturned, similar to Gannon. Take a look at Hamas. Big jumper. Good up to make sure he gets the par. Now get to Joel Freeman. Sure, he wanted to try to give that a little bit better of a chance, but obviously at least taking the par, which is the likely result after the tee shots. And let's get up to Cole Redolin. 
Best hope for a birdie on this thing. And he does have a straight putt at it. And he will connect. So that tree did not get in his way by any means. And three for the last four, keeping him tied for fifth position. Should put him right up there with Adam Hammes and Gammon Burr, who will par this hole. So very much our players in the hunt for that top five right now on this chase card. Now we get to hole 14, a very difficult one. You can see there is that Mando left right off the tee that kind of forces you through that gap. Usually going to see a big ante or a big forehand or potentially a roller, which kind of just sets up a big hyzer approach into a fairly guarded green. I believe there is a slight hazard just before circle two, but other than that, not really too much to worry about. There is also some OB right you do have to contend with if you really get on one, but that will certainly stay well out of that. That one kind of cut rolls on Hammes and actually puts him in the wilderness a bit over there on the left-hand side, though, again, no OB to worry about over there. This might pan out nicely for Gannon. That's kind of what I feel like Hammes was looking for, but just that turned to a cut roll, but that's a great shot. Same for Joel. That looks like the perfect angle to pan out at the end of the flight. Oh, no, but finds the OB on that right-hand side. Looked like a great shot. Tough break there. Samus booms this thing down the fairway. I have to settle for a par, of course, but he stays out of trouble. Burr looking to attack this thing for birdie. find that hazard maybe that's just straight OB looked like it was flag hazard oh swatted down now I'll finally get to call it all in that certainly will avoid the OB green but just too high it's Swat it down. Hammes is trying to fly through and gets rejected. And he's going to take a big number here. And yeah, that is hazard. So you do putt from that with the penalty. As this did play as the third most difficult hole on the day. 0.15 strokes over par. Only a quarter of the field finding the birdie. 44% par and... 31% bogey or worse. So quite the big bell curve on this one. Certainly a tricky one. Let's see if Cole can make some magic happen here from lengthy bid and yeah, just wide right. Happened to him a few times yesterday as well. Actually, I take that back. It was third difficult the round three. Round four, it was the most difficult with half a stroke over par. 11% of the field fought on the birdie. So, actually played more difficult the final day. Only five birdies in the whole field. So my apologies for that. A little bit of a misread on the stat for you, but you can see it was consistently hard both days, at least, as we get to a beautifully wooded center cut tunnel shot here on hole 15 335 feet just dead straight with some ob left there is a flexed forehand line which is probably the widest gap but that does bring that left ob more into play or you can just kind of go straight up the gut the backhands so you can see things getting a little bit more wet out here so 
now grip and such becomes a bit more of an issue. It looks like Hamas is looking to take that flex forehand I was referring to. Indeed he does, and it looks well executed. Are, is that actually too early? Yes, does get caught up. Just didn't quite have enough flex on it. Now that looks a lot better. That should do it. Oh yeah. Indeed it shall. Great look at Birdie from there. Let's see what Joel can do here. I might be turned over too much actually. Not necessarily, but did still get kind of hung up there, so we'll come up short. He's just not really giving himself chances to score. Everything he's had lately has just been such long bids. But still, you know, in that top 10, still certainly having a good overall tournament. Just having a couple of struggles here and there on this final round. So we are going to see Cole pitch up there, settle for his par. Hamas big jumper. A little bit wide, but we'll be able to get his par no problem from there. Let's see what Freeman can do. A little bit closer, just outside circle two. I just didn't really have a chance. I'll have to settle for par as well, but... Everyone's starting to kind of clean things up here. But of course, it's Gannon Burr who laced it. We'll get his birdie here. So put him in a tie for fourth position. Ham is tied for sixth. Cole Jordan that tie for fourth with Gannon. After a short break to wrap things up. My name's Garrett Gerthy. People may know me as Double G, and I've been making Double G craft jerky since I was 16 years old. And while Wakona and I are driving, don't have time to stop and eat, so I always have her grab me a small bag of Double G jerky. You got smash crack pepper on Tuesday, you can Wednesday you got the garlic. Late in the round, you know, hole 14, you might need a little pick-me-up, pull out some Double G jerky. Grab the big bag because you're gonna have to share. You can find Double G craft jerky at doublegjerky.com. As we get to hole 16, kind of a choose your own adventure hole as you have several gaps you can choose off the tee. The left gap probably being the biggest one for this 410 foot par three. No mandos, no OB to really worry about. Gannon choosing to take the smallest gap going right up the gut. Just didn't quite have the height to get all the way into circle one, but we'll have a lengthy bit at it. Mm, a little early there from Cole as he was looking to go up the center as well. Actually still makes a crazy amount of forward progress considering how early he hit a tree. Just shows you how much zip he had on that thing. Looks like Adam looking to go wide right. Just needs to have to push forward and skip in. Yeah, that'll, that'll roll up right near the edge of the circle. Is Joel thinking big roller here out left? Certainly an option. Come on. Looks good. Just needs to get past that one. Rolls into the circle. So well done there from Adam. So let's see what Cole Redolin's left with here. Definitely a lengthy one. Oh, that was certainly a nice bid. Certainly scared the chains there, but we'll have to settle for par on this one. Here's Gannon for birdie, just outside the circle. Steps it in, just a little high. And 
just the putting's really gotten Freeman here. I mean, many of the holes lately didn't really even have what felt like a fair bit at it, just well outside comfortable putting range, and that one just didn't really give it a chance. Yeah. Hammis, though, catching the right side. Puts him the seven under the round and tied for fourth now. And we'll join Gannon in that regard at 25 under par coming up here soon as Cole will par as well to stay at that 25 under mark to keep him in the tie for fourth as well. So our chase card doing work to stay in that tie for fourth position here across the board for the most part. And then Joel Freeman, even with a couple of hiccups here and there, has played great golf all weekend long and keeps himself in that top ten. Just a couple of holes left to play. We get the hole 17 and 830 foot par four. Just kind of requires a huge tee shot to kick things off, but then becomes more technical as you get further and further down the fairway. As you can see, lots of trees kind of guarding the green makes the approach a very technical shot. There are also a couple of mandos in play. A mando left that's uh, maybe like 300 feet off the tee or so. Maybe a little shorter than that. And there's another Mando a little bit further down. And there is some OB left and right once you get about halfway up the fairway. So, again, does get increasingly more technical as you progress. We have a nasty late tree kick there for Hamas, but still gets up there a good ways. And it annihilates that piece of plastic, but unfortunately also comes one to one with the tree there. And from my limited experience of disc golf, trees seem to always win that fight. And of course, Cole knows that he can rip one too, but that was just yanked over. Play some pinball and continues to roll, and man, that thing did all kind of stuff, but does finally settle down. Freeman looking to play the big turn. Great shot, Joel. And that looks beautiful. Really well done from Joel Freeman. It gets way on up there. Tricky approach here for Gannon. Trying to flex a forehand as best he can. Oh my. What a shot from Gannon Burr. Fights through the wilderness and gives himself a look. Roller here from Cole. Fights through. Kind of fizzles out as it's approaching circle one, but stays in play. And really about the best he could have asked for from where he was. Big forehand here from Hamas. Does catch one of those treats as it was trying to approach the green, though. And after a brilliant tee shot. Freeman looking to put a forehand in there and was in the right lane, but just catches a tree on the way in. As this hole did play, is the fourth most difficult on the day. Just barely under par with only 17% of the field finding the birdie. Everyone just trying to make do as best they can on this one. After taking some knocks along the way, looks like it'll be a card full of pars on this one. Unless Gannon can sink that. I won't quite make it. So yeah, looks like just kind of par cleanup duties here on the 17th hole. Yeah, 
Mo will get it done. Keeps him in that tie for fourth position. Looks like Han Hamas and Gannon Burr should remain there right with him based on their lies. That thing might bounce right back out at him. But we'll stay in there, no problem. So everyone cleaning things up just fine here. Everyone just kind of maintains position for the most part. So we head over to our final hole of the Portland Open, the 1,000-foot par 5. A uh, really oddly shaped fairway. Really looking to just get a big hyzer backhand off the tee. They need to stay short of an OB pond that exists on the left-hand side. Then the fairway gets really narrow the second half of the stretch. And there's a couple of mandos you need to stay left of. A lot of OB on this hole, particularly the back half of the fairway. Again, as long as you don't hit this pond... Either get over it or short of it. Usually, mostly any tee shot will do. Fine. Throw a sidearm around it, and then you have another sidearm in or back in. You're fine. Yeah, it, it's just the more right you are off the tee, the tougher the approach becomes to get into the fairway just forces a much steeper angled forehand and just kind of risk more ground action and all that jazz has Coles had that happen a couple of times where he just kind of yanked one over and that has potential to go OB wide right and indeed it does that's a tough one Oh my, Freeman's yanked that. That may go over the pond. Oh yeah, it will. Well clear of it. Big shot there from Joel Freeman. Looking to end in style. I see here's the forehand that Hamas is left with here. Just need to get left of the Mandos and stay in bounds. Oh yeah, that's dead center fairway. Safe for the OB and the Mandos. Sets him up for the approach for birdie. See if Gannon can do the same. Has to throw a kind of a similar shot there. Looks good. Right next to Hamas. Freeman making it further up the fairway. Has a little bit of an easier time throwing the forehand up. And that will do just fine. Stays clear of any issues with the Mandos. So this is Cole throwing three, trying to do the big backhand turnover. And gets it into the circle to potentially save Birdie after OB off the tee. Wow. What a monster Cole is. Oh, man, that looked beautiful from him. It just catches that last tree. Might still have a shot at it, though. So here's Gannon. Trying to swing it wider to stay away from that same tree. And that pushes nicely right next to the stand. And that'll be a stress-free birdie to end things for Burr. Speaking of potentially stress-free birdies, Joel Freeman gets well up there. And here's Hamas. Birdie right near the circle's edge. Ah, just low. We'll have to settle for par. Here's Freeman. And 
just low. Just seems like some of his punches didn't quite commit. A lot of his misses were low. We get up to Cole. Looking to save Birdie after OB. And that too won't quite do it. A little wide right. It seemed like that was his miss yesterday as well. Couple of hiccups here to finish things off from our chase car and having to settle for some pars. But that par will do well enough to keep Adam Hammes in a tie for fifth place to end his tournament. Another top five to his collection on his resume. As this did play, it's the second most difficult hole, a full half stroke over par. And Stroll Freeman will get his par. That'll keep him in the top 10. Cole. Drops down to eight after that bogey, but still a great finish. And getting Bird dropping in the birdie for a solo fourth place finish. That'll wrap things up. Final results here for you. A couple of our players in the top five and everyone at least finding the top ten here from the chase card. So a great performance from all of our players here. Congrats to all of them. If you take a look at the final leaderboard, nice to see Simon go back to back. See him back at the top. Makes you crack a smile. Such a legend. Again, we want to thank you all for tuning into this coverage. Please do follow subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can catch future Disc Golf Pro Tour coverage here from Gatekeeper Media. We'll be bringing you feature card and chase card action and all the Elite Series thoughts for the rest of the year. and has some other events in store for you as well. Again, special thank you to our Patreon supporters who helped make this all possible. And again, if you enjoyed the commentary and you want to give me a follow, I am Dustin Murray. You can catch me at follow dis, or excuse me, follow dust. <laughs> at Instagram and Twitter and Dustin Disc on YouTube. Again, thank you again so much. means a lot. Hope you enjoyed it and catch you at the next event.